I'm Dennis Galecki. Welcome to the 435th Imagine Buffalo program and another great virtual Imagine lecture hosted by our wonderful Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. Thanks so much for joining us today. Our October programs are themed around the 10th anniversary of the National Trust for Historic Preservation Conference that took place here in Buffalo in 2011. This program is created by the Center for the Study of Art, Architecture, History, and Nature, or Cezanne, and ImagineLifelongLearning.com. Now, we're going to start with our speaker shortly, but first, a little housekeeping. Everyone watching will be muted during our speaker's presentation. If you do have a question, please type it into the chat box, and we'll get to as many as we can. This program is being recorded. So you'll be able to watch it again later on the library's Facebook and YouTube channels. And we hope you share the link with your friends and networks. Now, our featured speaker is Ed Healy. Ed is Vice President of Marketing for Visit Buffalo Niagara, where he is responsible for BBN's destination marketing strategies. His portfolio includes overseeing all marketing communications, including the production of an annual touring guide, websites, e-newsletters, social media, videos, podcasts, and consumer advertising, as well as media and public relations. During his tenure at BBN, America's Friendliest City by the readers of Travel and Leisure Magazine, a top 10 value destination for 2020 by Lonely Planet, and most recently, one of the best places to travel in 2021 by Travel and Leisure Magazine. He was named the David I. Levy Communicator of the Year in 2016 by the Advertising Club of Buffalo, was recognized by Buffalo State College Hospitality and Tourism Department as one of their Buffalo Ambassadors of the Year in 2012 and given a Lifetime Achievement Award in Civic Promotion by the Campaign for Greater Buffalo History, Architecture, and Culture in 2011. He serves on the board of the Lipsy Architecture Center uh, uh, in Buffalo and is a member of the Buffalo State College ICE Council and the marketing committee of the Darwin Martin House. Quite a list of uh, accomplishments and now you see why he's the perfect speaker as we remember uh, the 10th anniversary of the National Trust for Historic Preservation which I can tell you, Ed had a major role to play. So let's hear now from Ed Healy. Ed? Okay, thank you, Dennis. Um, let me share my screen here. There we go. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everybody. And thank you, Dennis, for that nice introduction. Um, I know D Dennis noted that uh, we are celebrating the 10th anniversary of the uh, National Preservation Conference here in Buffalo. Um, but in fact, um, I think we can look back even farther and, and consider 2006 is really the origin of the effort to bring the National Preservation Conference to Buffalo. Uh, that year, uh, there was uh, the, the conference was held in Pittsburgh and a fairly large delegation of Buffalonians went down there to experience the uh, conference firsthand, uh, introduce ourselves to the, the trust leadership and make our intentions known that we wanted to bring this conference to Buffalo. Um, I know Dennis was there, Catherine Schweitzer was there, Sam Hoyt was there. Um, I think, you know, one of the things that really gave Buffalo a running start on landing the conference was that we had such a, a deep and passionate uh, preservation community that was really quite mature at that point. And of course, we had been investing in, in our built environment for some time um, in rebuilding and reimagining our city at that point. And we really felt that um, you know, we had the goods to, to host a conference like this, that we had 
um, the assets that the, the trust and membership would find enlightening and inspiring and the, the, the preservation success stories that they could take back to their own communities. So we went down there I'm pretty confident about who we were and what our chances were. Um, Unfortunately, at first, the, the trust didn't, it wasn't actually seeing it that way. They really, it, it appeared they didn't really know all that much about Buffalo and our, our great history of significant architecture. I think, you know, they may have shared perceptions that, you know, frankly, many Americans shared at that time. Uh, you know, that Buffalo was kind of a, a rust belt city that had seen better times and uh, wasn't necessarily the place that their membership would, would want to go. So we, we recognized that we really had our work cut out for us in convincing the trust leadership um, to, to bring the event to Buffalo. Um, so we went ahead and submitted an application um, in, um, it would have been March of 2007. And this line is, is from the cover letter that accompanied the, a very thick, but more than a hundred page bid book that we submitted to the National Trust. And uh, again, you know, we, we felt that, you know, it was the dawning of a new era in Buffalo and we wanted to share the success that we had been um, achieving, particularly as it related to restoring, repurposing and finding new uses for our, our built environment. So that went off to the trust in 2007. Around that time, we, we took a picture of, of many representatives of the preservation community just to really kind of create a visual of you know, just how many people were dedicated volunteers. You know, there's representatives, as you can see from the Darwin Martin House, the, the, the Teddy Roosevelt site, the History Museum, Great Cliff, the Roycroft, Roycroft Campus, on and on. So again, this, this was the army of people who really were behind the effort to bring the, uh, the Trust of Buffalo. It, you know, Dennis, you know, I mean, Bob and Catherine, um, of course, were the co-chairs, Mike Even, my colleague at Visit Buffalo Niagara, we kind of led the charge, but we really were just the sort of point people um, in front of a whole community of passionate people who wanted to show off our community. Um, in trying to bring woo the uh, National Trust, we act, at the time, um, we invited Richard Moe um, to Buffalo. He was then the president of the trust. And we had an event that was attended by more than 400 people in the Mary Seaton room at Klein Hands. And uh, we toured Richard Moe around town. I remember taking him to the Richardson complex with Stan Lipsy. He visited the, the Martin house, the Nash house. Uh, he was all over town and we clearly was blown away by our community. And in his remarks that, that night, he said, it doesn't get any better than this. Um, I think he was just bowled over by the energy, the enthusiasm, the passion of Buffalo to show off our city. I, I don't think he had ever been met with the kind of response he, we gave him that night uh, in the Mary Seaton room. And he went back to Washington without a doubt, telling his staff that, you know, we have to very seriously consider Buffalo. These people are serious about hosting our conference and they've got what it takes to put on a great conference. Um, just some of the people, you know, who uh, hosted Richard Moe, who were part of the effort um, to show off our city. This is Mary Roberts and uh, the late Ted Lowney, uh, the late great Ted Lowney, uh, who the preservation architect who had done so much work on the Martin House, Klein Hands and other buildings around town. Uh, this is uh, an occasion when we, at the time, we hosted a Kath Kathleen McQuigan, who was at the time the design critic for Newsweek magazine. You know, this kind of thing was going on over time and we were building enthusiasm and awareness about Buffalo as a city of great architecture. Uh, I took this on a tour of the um, Lafayette with Rocco Termini. Um, you know, you think back to 2011 and so many things that we now take for granted, you know, like the restored Martin House, the restored Gray Cliff, um, the hotel at Lafayette, um, Larkin Square, those things were not actually part, you know, a, a main part of the conference. They, they, you know, were, you know, we showed people these things, but they weren't completed projects at that time. So we've really done amazing work since the, the conference was, was held in Buffalo. Um, yeah, just after that, that when Richard Gamow was in town, we, we hosted Nikolai Orosov, who was then the architecture critic for the New York Times. And, uh, another person who came to Buffalo and became kind of a true believer in, in how great Buffalo really is and how significant its architectural pedigree is. 
And again, giving credit to the preservationists, the historians, the residents, the community who really came together to make a difference, to change the trajectory of our community, to say, you know, we're not destined to be a Rust Belt relic. We're not destined to be a has-been city. We actually are going to reimagine our city and, and chart a new course for our, our city. And much of that was built around the, the architecture sector. This actually, this is a photographer from the New York Times who accompanied Nikolai to Buffalo in shooting the, the Richardson Towers. And that resulted in a, a three-page spread in the Times, which really helped to create greater awareness, growing awareness of Buffalo as a cultural and architectural destination. Um, preservation, a couple of years later, um, the magazine of the National Trust followed up with a, a great cover story called Buffalo Rising. And, um, you know, I think this quote really shows that there was a lot of education to do on our part. We had to show the world that uh, what we were and, and what we had. And this writer admitted right up front, he arrived in Buffalo woefully uninformed underestimating the breadth and significance of the treasures Buffalo had and our remarkable preservation success story. So, you know, I really just feel like credit is really owed to our, our preservation community. The people who, you know, were working, you know, back in the Preservation Coalition of Erie County, the Landmark Society, um, the Campaign for Greater Buffalo, you know, what became uh, Preservation Buffalo Niagara, Explore Buffalo. You know, there's a, there's a lot of credit to go around. Um, in terms of the, the groundwork that was laid that you know, resulted in the trust saying, yes, we're going to come to Buffalo. Um, this is uh, my colleague, Mike Even, and the, our then president, Dottie Gallagher, who now runs uh, the Buffalo Niagara Partnership uh, at the National Preservation Conference in Austin, the year before it was held in Buffalo, this is 2010. For a couple of years after being awarded the conference, we would go to, um, the National Trust event and do a what we call attendance building, just, you know, winning friends, influencing people, trying to get people excited about coming to Buffalo in 2011, giving out videos and uh, DVDs and uh, mouse pads. You can see all the collateral we had on the table there. And uh, it really was, again, you know, a real passionate effort on our part to make sure that the, the Trust was as successful an event as possible, which ultimately um, when it came the next year, uh, 10 years ago this week, um, it, at, that was the largest attendance that was uh, that ever came to the National Preservation Conference, more than 2,500 people. I don't know if that mark's been exceeded in the 10 years since, but that was the high water mark that the, the trust achieved. And they were thrilled um, with how many people came, but with the response that our community gave them. We rolled out the red carpet and I, I truly believe we knocked their socks off. They were just so thrilled with everything they heard and saw and experienced. Um, if you recall, if you were around at the time, Mark Summer of the Buffalo News just gave, you know, gavel to gavel coverage of the event. It was covered by our electronic media, radio, TV. And, uh, and, and I think the real takeaway for the Buffalo community was how impressed, how enthralled, how enthusiastic people were about our community. And, you know, you have to remember this, this was after decades of, of sort of civic self-doubt, you know, a civic inferiority complex where Buffalonians, you know, kind of lost um, belief in ourselves. And, um, you know, I think, as I said, it was kind of a growing um, movement to restore and reimagine, rebuild our community. And it, in, in 2011, it really kind of culminated in all these people coming to our community and us showing off our assets. And uh, I just took this line from a, uh, a letter to the editor that Steve Weiss, um, who was at the time affiliated with Preservation Buffalo Niagara, you know, sent basically to the community saying, now do you believe how great you are? Because all of these people from around the world who came to our community the, that week of the 18th to the 22nd, were blown away and just love Buffalo. And it was time for us to start believing in ourselves again. So, you know, I'd like to think that that, that event in 2011 was a real inflection point for our community. Um, you know, I don't want to overstate it, but it really was a very big deal. And I think there a lot of civic pride and self-belief and sort of a restored civic psyche emerged from that week and, and all the, the compliments and, um, reinforcement we got from these people who came from far and near. 
And, and that was really the, the goal was to knock their socks off so that they would go back to their communities, their universities, their preservation groups, sing our praises and create kind of a ripple effect so that people would come back to Buffalo, media would pay more attention to Buffalo and our, our sort of profile on the national stage as a city of great architecture, um, a city of visionary preservationists, um, a city of developers who take chances to create um, new, you know, reuse, existing buildings and, and recreate our city, that would emerge. And, and I think it did, but one of the unanticipated uh, consequences of the conference, I believe, was this, this jolt of civic confidence and this um, renewal of, of civic belief. So it, it was really, in my mind, sort of a watershed moment. And you kind of, from the tourism perspective, certainly, we look at sort of before the conference and after the conference because it was a different kind of environment we were dealing with after the conference. The media started to pay more attention to us. And, um, you know, we were, certainly were hearing anecdotally and through research we did at Visit Buffalo Niagara, you know, that more and more people were finding their way to our community to experience our architecture, to visit our cultural attractions, to um, experience the arts and crafts treasures that we have out in East Aurora, the presidential history that we have. Um, it really did take us to another level um, as a cultural and heritage destination. Um, this, again, I'm sharing photos that I've taken over the years. Um, I believe that's Dick Gordon, who was a docent at the, at the Martin House, showing the house off to a group of people. And again, important to remember, things that we take for granted, like a restored Martin House. I mean, I live near the Martin House. I walk by there all the time. And it's like, yeah, there it is. Well, it took a big effort by a lot of people summoning the will and raising a lot of money and a lot of you know, blood, sweat, and tears to get that masterpiece restored um, to what it is today. And that story has been recounted you know, countless times around our community, whether it's Shays, Kleinhands, Great Cliff, the Guarantee Building, Larkin Square, now at Chandler Street. There are countless examples of, you know, the city and its residents coming together to, to rebuild our, our city and then tell our story to the world. And that's what we've been seeing at Visit Buffalo Niagara, this kind of enthusiastic response when we bring writers to our community you know, so many examples here, the, the, the Chicago Trib Tribune, you know, the vibrant energy here is palpable. I mean, I think the, the National Trust Conference was the first time we really harnessed that energy and, and on behalf of our cultural sector and really, you know, sort of guided it on, you know, in a real sort of and leveraged it in a real targeted intentional way um, with, a, with a very specific goal or set of goals in mind. And, uh, you know, it really worked as we had hoped. And again, just sharing things from my photo library, you know, the beautiful waterfront that we now have. This was, of course, once a very industrial area down in Furman Boulevard. You know, this is my daughter on a bike ride, <laughs> enjoying herself in one of our, you know, industrial heritage, um, you know, elements down there at the, um, you know, what was the Union Ship Canal, and it's now the Lakeside Commerce Park, um, the, uh, the wind sculptures down at Wilkeson Point. Um, there's so many things to point to that we now have that, you know, we really, that really have enhanced our quality of life and have also made Buffalo a much more appealing visitor destination, you know, and, you know, here Blog TO, very widely read blog in the Toronto area, um, talking about all the things we have to do on our waterfront. You know, an example of, you know, Riverworks, which was just a derelict piece of property for probably for generations and now turned into this, you know, sort of multi-faceted urban entertainment complex using grain elevators as one of its signature spots. I love that the old and new Buffalo still come together. You still see lake freighters coming up the Buffalo River, but now they're, you know, they come alongside power boats and tiki boats and, and the grand lady boat tours, that kind of thing. So old Buffalo and, and new Buffalo sort of live side by side. And I think, you know, we have a, a better, more interesting, more vibrant city um, because of it. I don't want to lose old Buffalo. Um, I think people, that authenticity, that genuineness that people feel here, um, the, the sense of place that they feel when they come to Buffalo is very important to what we have to sell to the world now. But adding these new things are really, you know, beer gardens and, and breweries and food trucks, that all, you know, adds to the visitor experience. We didn't have that before 2011. Of course, the, here we are at Canal Side. Um, 
Cleveland Plain Dealer, you know, describing Buffalo as historic, gritty, and on the cusp of a renaissance. And, uh, you know, this was written a few years ago, and it's things have only gotten more impressive since then. People, I don't know if you remember the, the Enlightened event at the uh, Richardson Towers a few years ago that the BPO played in front of a crowd of, that was estimated at about 10,000 people. I mean, that was an absolutely electric event on, on the, out on that Olmsted designed lawn and in front of this Richardson design building. Um, just, just a spectacular event, sort of another culminating uh, event that, that really, to me, underscored how far we've come as a community. It's another beauty shot of that, that property over there. Um, the New York Times has covered Buffalo several times since 2008. Here, you know, pointing out Larkinville as a real, a real success story, comparing it to successful districts, you know, in, in, in lower Manhattan and, and, and Brooklyn. Um, again, you know, I, I've got pictures of this just as a, as a derelict gas station really not that long ago. And it's really just remarkable what we've achieved as a community. And uh, like I said, what we now take for granted, and, and it's important, I think, to, to take the opportunity every now and then to sort of, you know, step back and reflect a little bit on how far we've come and what we've achieved, because there was a long time, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there, there was real self-doubt in Buffalo. Um, could we ever, you know, really do big things again? Could we think big and really achieve something of significance? And I think we've, you know, the answer has been a resounding yes, absolutely we can. And we've done it again and again, um, leading up to the National Preservation Conference and since then. So as I said, just a watershed event, a beautiful morning shot just captured on a walk a few years ago of the, uh, the Martin House in, in autumn. Um, this is taken this summer, springtime with the um, beautiful um, sculptures from the Albright that were on loan um, over the course of the last 18 months over there. Love the cultural collaborations that you see in our community now that you didn't use to see, of course, Great Cliff, another jewel in our portfolio. I love taking people out there and, and the view that they get across you know, Lake Erie to Canada. You can see Point Avenue in the distance. It's just spectacular. And we've got so many stories like that to tell. And it's great that you know, the world has really found its way to our door and is, is helping us, you know, amplify those stories. They're, they're helping us to, to tell the story of a reinvented and vibrant urban hub as the Smarter Travel referred to it. Here's the, uh, the Buffalo River just on a regular Thursday evening uh, last summer. You know, when I first started kayaking myself 16 years ago, I would go out I'd be the only person out on the river now. I've got to wait in line to get my boat into the water because so many people have taken back to, you know, um, our water resources. And, you know, that's an organization like the Buffalo Niagara Water Keepers deserves great credit. Uh, Empire State Development, uh, the Department of Environmental Con Conservation. You know, there's so many grassroots organizations, but also now working top down with official organizations that really have some assets to help us rebuild our waterfront. And it's really, it's had a real impact and we have a real blue economy now because of it. Um, public art has been a huge, huge thing. I like to say that Buffalo has gone from black and white to color over the last 10 years with the Albright Knox Public Art Initiative. Um, you know, so many examples that I'm sure so many of you are, are familiar with. Everywhere you go in the city, outside the city, it's just the streetscape is so much colorful than it was, more, much more colorful than it once was. And it, it really shows to me that it, this is a community that cares, that has a vision and is executing that vi vision. And it's across sectors. It's architecture, it's, it's art, it's, it's history, it's culinary, um, you know, it's outdoor recreation. There's, it's family fun now. You know, there's so many reasons why people come to our community. Um, and again, you know, Matt Meltzer, you know, a writer who's been to Buffalo on several occasions, just loves our community. He's from Miami. When he first started coming up here, people would say, why are you going to Buffalo? What is in Buffalo? And Matt has become one of our biggest cheerleaders and has written many articles about Buffalo. And, uh, and it writes in a very kind of conversational way. And uh, I, I just love his quotes that, that really show off our community. Here's a, a shot of Five Points, another neighborhood. This is Chandler Street. Um, you know, what the Olmsted Parks Conservancy has done with the, what the parks has been fantastic in recent years. It wasn't always like that, folks. And, and, you know, very, very recently, you know, the parks did not look as beautiful as they do today. You know, 15 years ago was a different story. 
So I'm, I'm finishing up here. This was a recent visitor to Buffalo from the Detroit News. Um, he was just enamored of Buffalo, went back, wrote a fantastic article that was in the Detroit News this past June after Visit Buffalo and I hosted him on a press trip. Um, this is, you know, our garden sector has been a huge, another group of people passionate about our, about our community, trying to make a difference in our community. Garden Walk Buffalo, Gardens Buffalo, Niagara, Open Gardens, huge success stories in our community. The, the backyard of Jim Charlie of Garden Walk Buffalo. Um, this, this was just published a couple weeks ago. Um, Buffalo is an inspired choice for an exploratory excursion. I mean, that really... You know, it says it all, folks. Look at how beautiful our city has become. Look at what we've done. We should all, you know, be very proud of, of what we've done, how far we've come as, as a community. Um, and um, I know I'm sort of whipping through the um, slides here, but, you know, we'd like to leave a, a little time for some questions if there are any. Um, you know, this is Silo City. There's, you know, a big effort now going on down there to build apartments and art spaces, the uh, Duende. Um, a club down there just attracts all sorts of visitors. People love Silo City. Um, it's just, a, a, talk about a sense of place. It is truly unique. There is nothing else like it anywhere else on the planet. It is great that we have something so distinctive that really differentiates Buffalo as, as a very distinct place um, on the map. Um, Jennifer Bain was the travel editor at the, at the uh, Toronto Star for many years. Loves Buffalo, always sings our praises. You know, and she says, I can't believe that every single person I know doesn't realize how great Buffalo is. And uh, finally, uh, I always like to end with this quote of the great Tony Bourdain, the great um, food writer and, uh, you know, tra travel writer, um, you know, unfortunately now passed away, but he came to Buffalo. Again, like so many people, I think with thinking, well, really, why am I going to Buffalo? Uh, and uh, came away and said, this is just such a distinctive place. It has a wonderful personality. So it's, it's something that, you know, doesn't exist in every place. And I love, you know, he said that it's a weirdly wonderful place, which I will take that every day of the week as a, as a great, great compliment as a marketer, um, as a guy who does media relations and, and travel marketing. That is just a quote that we can take to the bank and, and, and spread that far and wide because of course he's got a great brand name and people know his name respect his name um so there you go that's my 20 sorry dennis went a little long 24 minutes of what led up to the national preservation conference and, and where we've been since and uh, i i think it's a very impressive and inspiring story and i've been it's been a privilege for me to be a part of it and uh, work with uh, great leaders of our community like dennis like Catherine schweitzer and, and bob skirker um, there's just so many people that have played a role in making Buffalo a better place here in, uh, in 2021. So, Ed, thank you. That, that was a wonderful walk down memory lane, but more importantly, it, uh, it's a walk that connects yesterday with today. And, uh, and, and you did a, a good job of showing, uh, uh, what we now many might take for granted. And, uh, uh, yes, it wasn't always that way. Uh, Folks, if you have comments or questions, uh, please enter them into the chat box. I'll uh, I'll reminisce a bit with you. We yeah, I had the privilege of serving uh, as a volunteer uh, uh, director for the Landmark Society of the Niagara Frontier, and we were located as you were, as Mary Roberts and the uh, Martin House were all in the Market Arcade. And uh, uh, my first preservation conference was the one before and. Portland, Oregon, took the train out there and came back. Uh, and I think you'll recall because you were one of the first persons I visited and said, Ed, we've got to get this conference to Buffalo. Uh, the logical choice is 2011 uh, as they go back and forth and look out four or five years. And uh, you agreed and really coordinated the effort uh, to get all of the community organizations uh, to be part of that bid. That was an amazing gathering of people. Uh, uh, we would meet in your offices. Mary Roberts actually would, would host them at the Martin House uh, up on the second floor. And uh, it was a great time. Uh, we had Lynn uh, Osmond from the Chicago Architecture Foundation for a luncheon at the Saturn Club. I think you were uh, involved with that as well. Managed to get her in and uh, that preceded 
the big event at uh, at Klein Hands. Uh, so there were all these wonderful steps. Oh, and by the way, Community Foundation, remember that 21st century uh, award that was a combination of, of uh, the Visitor Center and uh, 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 WNED and, uh, uh, and ourselves at the Landmark Society. We, we added the signs that are all around town uh, looking at the City Beautiful movement that uh, are still standing uh, undisturbed uh, uh, since 207. So a lot of pieces, that video really went a long way at the conference then to, uh, in Pittsburgh to really make a mark, leave a, a great impression uh, and tell Buffalo story by way of the Martin House. So uh, Leah, do we have questions, comments? To we do have a few questions. Good. Um, when do you expect things to get back to normal in terms of tourists coming back to Buffalo? Well, I mean, we're, we're hoping, we, 2021 really was not as bad as we expected. Really, we had some uh, very um, better than um, anticipated hotel occupancy. And um, we're, we're looking forward to actually a pretty robust year on the leisure side of our business in 2022. We're not expecting the conventions and meetings side to come back really until 2024. The jury's really still out on um, you know, what the long-term repercussions are going to be for uh, conventions and meetings. But on the leisure side, we're ready for a big year next year. Um, of course, we're looking ahead to the uh, reopening of the Albright Knox, um, whether that's, you know, the end of 2022 or the beginning of 2023, that's going to be a huge um, event in the, you know, the history of our community, honestly. And I mean, the, probably the biggest investment ever made in a tourist attraction. And uh, we're working closely with uh, the Albright and our other cultural attractions to really leverage that and uh, get a lot of attention from the media and of course, drive visitation to Buffalo. So the next 18 months, we're hoping are gonna be an exciting time in Buffalo. Great, and the other question is a little bit related. Um, they say these days Buffalo has so much to offer visitors, but there are still millions of visitors going to Niagara Falls who don't know they should stop here. <laughs> Although the pandemic has slowed everything down, are there any efforts going on to connect Buffalo and Niagara Falls by public transportation? Well, um, honestly, that um, is kind of above my pay grade. It certainly has been discussed many times over the years. Um, that lack, uh, lack of connectivity and ease of getting to uh, Niagara Falls from either, you know, Buffalo Niagara International Airport, the, the, train, the train station, uh, the, the uh, uh, NFTA depot downtown. Um, that, that is, I think, kind of a hindrance. And we, of course, would like to see more sort of cross-pollination um, between the two destinations. And of course, when I started in this business 20 years ago, um, it was really all about Niagara Falls and Buffalo was considered the gateway to Niagara just as a sort of a place to get to on the way to Niagara Falls. Now, I think, you know, we have our own distinct value proposition as we've been talking about the last 25 minutes, you know, and there are a lot of reasons for cultural tourists to come to Buffalo, culinary tourists, history buffs, that kind of thing, outdoor recreation um, aficionados. Um, so, you know, we want to get people up to Niagara Falls to enhance their experience when they're in Buffalo. I'm sure, you know, our, our counterparts up at Destination Niagara USA, you know, feel like, you know, Buffalo adds value to the people that they're really focusing on. So it really would be in everybody's interest if it was easier to get back and forth. Um, but I honestly can't answer, you know, when that might happen in terms of an actual change in, you know, infrastructure and, and, and transportation options for visitors. That makes sense. Thank you. And those are all the questions. Great. Ed, we've got to uh, uh, wrap this up. As I say, it's been a uh, a, a fun journey to, uh, let's see, remember our, uh, our uh, asking about buffalo pins that we were all wear, walking around with. Glad you kept that, Dennis. So you've got that old hat. And your whole past like that. Uh, uh, and I'm sure well many done. others, I'm sure many others in Buffalo uh, have that in some souvenir drawer uh, <laughs> as, as well. Um, it, it uh, Mike even was uh, not able to join us, but I was going to also add one of the, we had two big negatives. We didn't have a strong preservation group at the time. 
Now we've developed Preservation Buffalo Niagara, and that's what next week's speakers will be, uh, uh, you know, hopefully sharing that story because it's a, uh, a major plus now. But then we had basically uh, different volunteer groups, and uh, that was a negative from the trust. I remember we needed a strong group, and uh, that evolved. But the other thing missing were great hotels that most cities have historic hotels, and we didn't. So we had two major negatives that your group, you and Mike, really uh, did a great job of overcoming those negatives and uh, and getting us past the competition, as I recall, of Hartford and, and Philadelphia. Philadelphia and, yeah. uh, uh, were the opponents, but um, we pulled that one out nicely yeah. and uh, much to to your credit. And um, uh, that's that's uh, part of what this is about, to acknowledge that and, and archive it. Uh, and I'm glad for the visuals that you provided. Uh, this whole uh, month of October is providing uh, an archival remembrance of, uh, of that important event. Uh, other things have happened. Uh, certainly a lot more hotels and a lot of uh, uh, other pieces of the puzzle have fallen in place. But coincidentally, or partly because of the national uh, conference coming here, uh, certainly uh, coincided with a turning of attitudes, which uh, then creates the rest of it uh, um, uh, that, that has followed. So, uh, Ed, our thanks to you uh, and Mike and all the good people at uh, Visit Buffalo Niagara uh, for your job then and now. Uh, and folks, my thanks to you for uh, joining us today. Uh, as mentioned, Catherine Schweitzer, uh, uh, Roberts Kirker, the co-chairs of the National uh, Conference that came to Buffalo uh, 10 years ago are going to uh, remember then and I think uh, reflect on now as well. So that's next week. Uh, join us if you can. Uh, again, share the uh, video uh, uh, on the library's YouTube page uh, with others and uh, share our good story. Uh, it's a good way to, to, to do so. Ed, thank you very much. Thanks, folks. See you next week if possible. Be well.